Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Jay here. Welcome to Faith Evolved, where I talk about all things spiritual, metaphysical, philosophical, and mental health. And today's episode is going to fall under the category of mental health. And my theory on why we have such a prevalent epidemic of mental health disorders in this country. And my short answer is because we're a bunch of spoiled drug addicts. Yeah, well, that sounds kind of harsh, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sure it does. And let me just stay tuned, all right, because I want to explain what I mean by that. It's not as harsh as it sounds. Stay tuned. So we're a bunch of spoiled drug addicts, huh? Really, Jay? Is that what you really think? Actually, yes, but let me clarify what I mean by that. I don't mean drugs in, in a sense that, you know, everyone's doing drugs like cocaine and heroin and stuff like that, and they get needles laying on the floor of their bedroom. Yeah, there are some people that have that issue, and I definitely feel for them, and I understand why. And honestly, I have a very addictive personality myself. There are certain things that I struggle with that I have a very hard time giving up. I'm going to do an episode on one of those issues very soon. Um, I'm going to be very transparent about my life and things that I usually would never share. But at this point, you know, I'm 38 years old. You kind of hit the point when you're in your mid-30s where you just don't care what people think about you as much anymore. You're kind of more secure in who you are as a person. But I've struggled with mental health for most of my life up until the past couple of years where I finally felt like I got some relief and I found some solutions that work which I've talked about in previous videos. I went through a very hellish OCD-like symptom about two and a half, three years ago that took me a really, you know, took me down a really dark path, became nearly suicidal. And thank God, through the grace of God, I was able to get through that. And I actually feel better now than I did before I went through all that. And I dealt with mental health issues like depression, anxiety, anger, irritability for most of my life before that event. Um, and I know several people in my life, several people who are close to me, family, friends who struggle with mental health disorders, uh, ranging from you know bipolar to borderline personality to OCD to you know just regular anxiety, panic disorder, uh, depression, you name it. I know folks that have it, and I'm sure you do, or at least know someone who does. So it's a pretty prevalent condition, and almost everyone and their mother is on some kind of medication for it. And, you know, I definitely feel, you know, of course I feel for these folks. I know what they've gone through, you know, just some of the stuff I've been through in my life. You know, I, it's not something I'm laughing at or I'm, like, saying man up or woman up or, you know, get over it, grow up, whatever. Um, so it's not, it's, not that, it's not the attitude that I have. But my theory on why we have such a prevalent mental health disorder in this country and possibly even in the world as, you know, especially developed countries are, are moving up, you know, in civilization and advancements and stuff, it's because of modern life. Modern life is essentially the biggest giant, like, you know, line of coke that society has ever sniffed at once. <laughs> it's just one big giant shot of heroin, this modern life is. I mean, look at what humanity has gone through since the 1800s until now, 2022. We went from being a very simple, you know, traditional family values of, you know, the, the, the dad working and the mom being home being the homemaker and raising the kids and, you know, simple, you know, farm life or maybe there was some, you know, people working in industry that was starting to grow in the 1800s, and early 1900s, but we had such a simple life back then. We didn't have to worry about all these bills and, and you know, credit cards and, and you know, insurance companies and just all these different things we had, all these responsibilities that we have, uh, regulations, all of which I think are good things to help stabilize, you know, a, a quickly growing economy and a, a, a you know a country that's ex, that's exploding with um, just you know technology and innovations and and so many things that are automated for us now. Everything from a microwave to you know Alexa and everything else that's around here, you know, as far as all these <laughs> things that we can now you know buy and 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 make our lives simpler and easier. But I think all these things that we're doing. All these things that we're buying, especially technology and the internet and computers and smartphones, it's screwing with our brains. We're not ready for this. We're evolving way too quickly. And I think we're overstimulated as a whole, as a, as a, a population. And I think that's the biggest contributor. 
Our minds are working too fast, too quickly. There's too much information coming in, too much information coming at us from all different directions. And we're expected to, you know, also have relationships. And when you have all these things given to you, you become addicted to them. I know firsthand, I'm, I'm speaking firsthand, I am that person that I'm talking about that is addicted to modern life and spoiled by it and <laughs> suffering with the consequences unless I do something about it and which was, you know, slowing down and my, you know, when I went through that OCD experience three years ago and that was massive crushing depression and anxiety, it forced me to slow down. I, I had to sit down 20 minutes a day, twice a day and meditate, just try to be in the present moment and just let all the past stuff go and all the, and not worry about the future and just try my best to just give it all to God and trust in God, trust in the universe because yeah, on paper I had it all, you know? People would say back in the day, oh, you got a, you got a, a beautiful wife and two amazing kids, you know, which I do, and I did, I should say, I don't, I'm not married now, but you know, the kids, yes. And as far as the house, I had a nice, you know, 200 year old farmhouse that had way too much work that needed to be done. But you know, I had a house, I had a job, I had a, two cars, you know, on paper, yeah. I, you know, I had, I had money in the bank, I had good credit. So yeah, on paper, everything was great, but I was suffering. I was miserable on the inside, constantly irritable and cranky and moody and just, you know, I would snap at people, my, my, my now ex-wife and kids, you know, I would, I would, you know, come home and just be reclusive and go in my bedroom and shut the door, go on the computer, play video games or surf the web and other things, you know, play, play music. I would very rarely want to be bothered by somebody else. I couldn't be bothered. I'd, I'd rather be alone because I was so addicted to all things technology, all things modern life. And it's so easy to sit there and, and you know, just organize your files in your computer or something or your music or just, you know, just search YouTube for a bunch of videos all day. You know, uh, ranging from all kinds of random topics of useless, useless information to how to, pro you know, to do like projects in your house or, you know, music videos or just funny videos. I mean, it's so much just content, content, content over and over and over again. It just, it just becomes to the point where your brain, it gets so stuck in that state of expecting all these hits of little, little hits of, uh, you know, modern life, um, cocaine or heroin, whatever you want to call it, that when you don't have it for even a matter of minutes or sometimes, you know, if you're lucky an hour, you start having the withdrawals. So I know that happens to me. I know I'm constantly taking my phone out of my pocket and looking at it hoping for an update on a, on a you know, status update on Facebook or maybe a, a new Snapchat or something or um, uh, maybe something selling on eBay that I, you know, now that I'm starting a, a, you know eBay store. It's like so much constant this stuff in this modern life that's always wants our attention. These ads everywhere and you know these, these stores everywhere within walking distance many times if you live in the city. Um, and just and it's so easy just to, to drive up to Starbucks or McDonald's or any of these fast food places to get whatever you want. It's all that I think is what is getting in the way of relationships. I know firsthand, and it affects and negatively impacts our relationships because we don't need people as much anymore. We become more self-dependent, independent. We don't need to ask for help or rely on each other because well, the computer can do it for us. Alexa can do it for us. Siri can do it for us. Okay, Google, you know, <laughs> you know, a microwave, an air fryer. I mean, um, your your home automation, uh, uh, smart security camera system, whatever you got, you know, it can protect you. You don't need to rely on anybody else anymore. You know, you can go to the grocery store and buy your apples and oranges and fruits and vegetables and you know, prepared uh, foods, meats cut for you to you know, deli sliced to order. I mean, everything's so. So modern, it's like, I'm not advocating to get off the grid and, you know, sell your house, move to the country, you know, and you know, live off the land. You know, if that's what you want to do, great. You know, and I commend folks that are able to do that and stick with it because if I did it, I know I'd be missing my smartphone in a matter of hours. <laughs> and if I was completely off the grid, you know, I'd want to then try to find out how to get solar panels or something and hook it up to a generator so I at least have some kind of electricity. You know, we're so spoiled. We're so spoiled by modern life. How is society gonna handle this? How is society gonna recover from this shock? It's, I know there's a, there's a passage in, in the Arantia book that talks about society needs to be very careful to not destroy itself. 
because we need people that aren't just in material uh, professions. They need to be also into philosophy and, and, and um, spirituality and things like that and, and talking about those things that matter that are eternal because these, these, all these gadgets and gizmos that we have and these easy access you know, to anything and everything we need as far as media goes that's going to be the downfall of society. And there's many people that have talked about it and sounded the, the alarm on it, you know. I'm just saying, that I think is the reason why we have so much mental health problems in this country. Because one, the technology. Two, the less dependence on other people. We need other people in our lives for it to have meaning. Because that's the only thing that goes with us when we die. We leave this body behind and we ascend to the next life, go to heaven, whatever you believe. You know, that's... That's the only thing that goes with you is your soul and any other souls that you've happened to, you know, bond with during this lifetime. And it's so easy to forget that. And I know that I felt the sting and, and the despair or depression when I realized, wow, I went through my entire life, 35 years at that point in time, and I didn't really have anything to speak of relationship-wise. I was going through a divorce. You know, I, didn't, I was losing some friends, losing my religion, my, you know, and in the community thereof, which is church. I lost a lot and realized, damn, you know, forgive my French, but damn, I lost a lot. And I had to start over, and not just physically, but also spiritually and relationally, I had to start over. And thankfully, you know, as I've worked on myself, I've been able to maintain some of my uh, relationships, even from back then, even my ex-wife, were still friends. And I met some great people in the spiritual community along the way as well that gave me back my meaning and gave me back hope from, for this life. So... Yeah, modern life it spoiled us. It's a, it's a big, huge shot of heroin to, to the, uh, you know, to opiate for the masses, <laughs> as they say. And the solution to the matter, I think, is just to slow down, you know, not try to fix what's wrong, but just slow down and, and, and just take some time to just be alone and meditate and, and, and try to like, let things go that, that just set you off. This is speaking to myself as well. And then, you know, be willing to uh, rely on other people and have them rely on you a little bit. Not as a crutch, not like, you know, for them to take advantage of you, but just realize that, you know, really what you need is relationships and being able to bond with other people, feeling the presence of other people, reminding you, hey, it's not all, you know, you're not alone, but it's not also about you either. So that's all I can say about that. I hope that uh, this has been helpful to some people, at least to shed some light on what the issue is. Because, yeah, there are certainly things that, that people are born with, you know, mental, you know, maybe some kind of uh, genetic disorder or something, or, you know, maybe, you know, um, it's just something, you know, chemical imbalance within your brain. But I still think it's the contributor to that is that we're just being, you know, barraged with overstimulation from, the, from this modern life that we currently live. So I think once we, you know, recognize that's the problem, we just, just take it easy, slow down. You know, and not just and not spend so much time alone, and spend time with people, and realize that's the highest priority. Then I think society will start to, you know, normalize and we'll start heading in the right direction. So, so I want to thank everyone for watching this video today. If it's your first time here, thank you very much. Please consider checking out the other videos that I have. And if anything resonates with you, I would be humbly appreciative of your subscription. And I want to thank the 615 subscribers I already have, which is almost two-thirds of the way of my goal of 1,000 by the end of this year. So please like this video, comment below, because I like to always read your comments and reply whenever I can. And, of course, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified anytime I release any new videos. Last but not least, please share this video and any of my other videos you like on social media, because, you know, of course, I appreciate any visitors and, you know, spreading the word. I think what I have to offer is of value and will be helpful to anybody that watches. So thank you guys and God bless.